Hey people, um, so I was asked about the construction of this lever lock pick that you see before you. Um, obviously the thing has already been built, but nevertheless I thought I might try at least to describe a little how I went about making it. So let's see how we go. After making these keys earlier for the safe deposit lock from uh, a brass door hinge that I had laying around, I ended up with a few spare parts. Now, this part here, which uh, helps keep the two sides of the hinge together, looked interesting to me. I thought, aha, maybe I could use this. And basically, that is this part here as you might be able to tell. It's just a straight brass rod and I cut this little extra bit off and that became the central shaft. Now I also had some pieces of brass tubing. Here's a short length of it. And I noticed that this was the perfect fit. So this thin bit of brass tube become the outer shell for this part of the tool here. Okay, so moving right along, we have uh, our central shaft here with a convenient handle-like end. We have our outer shaft that is trying to run away. But what I needed after this point was a bit of a handle on this section for the outer tube to help rotate that around and also a couple of extra pieces to be able to manipulate the levers. What I had was a piece of brass bar so from there it was just a matter of taking a cutting tool and starting to cut off some little slithers that could then be cut down to make these pieces. So, getting the parts together was really not so hard. Just to be clear, um, this little section here, this little handle can be cut to basically, you know, whatever measurements you'd like. However, the parts to manipulate the lever and the actual bolt need to be of the correct thickness. If this is the width of your lever, <clears throat> you're in good shape, and similarly if this will fit the actual locking bolt, you're in good shape. So do bear that in mind. Common sense, I know, but I thought I'd better mention Okay, that. just something else that I should mention with respect to these parts, and in particular the preparation for attaching them to the inner brass rod and the outer brass tube. Um, what I wanted was that for the bottoms of these parts that were going to attach to these parts, um, I wanted that to have a nice curve so that would fit snugly and make uh, the job of attaching them via brazing much easier and cleaner. So what I did was I took a, a file that had a bit of a rounded surface and I basically just filed backwards and forwards just enough so that when I came to attaching these parts they would fit together as cleanly as I could possibly make them. And with your parts basically prepared um, it's just attaching them is really just a matter of taking some flux, some solder and a butane torch like this and um, doing a little bit of brazing or if you prefer hard soldering. Now, unless you like burnt fingertips, I suggest you use a, a vise and clamps to hold these bits together while you're joining them. But um, once you've joined all the parts together in this basic formation, it's time to do a little bit of fine tuning. So what I ended up doing was just filing these parts back so that uh, the width 
of these was appropriate enough to be able to fit into the keyway. I rounded off the ends here just to make it a little bit easier to move with inside the lock, less sharp edges to catch on. And also because I made this for a lane lever lock, I needed to uh, do a little bit of cutting away here and here to allow the tool to fit into the keyway past the warding. So that's uh, basic construction. So at the end of all of that you basically end up with a tool, hopefully, that you can take and fit inside the lock and you can twist the central part to catch onto the latch and use this outer section to interact with the levers. So there's a little bit of filing at this point to make sure everything is smooth and everything is is going to fit as well as possible. But um, it's time worth it's time worth spending. So let's see if I can demonstrate this thing for a second. Tool within the lock. I'm going to take this uh, the tensioning element and see if I can engage the bolt and once that's engaged take the uh, lever manipulator raise the lever and presto successfully locked without a key. So just a, a simple one lever lock but um, good enough to demonstrate that the uh, the tool actually works. But really the main point of showing you this is just to kind of demonstrate that there's not really too much of a limit to to what you can make for yourself. So if you have some parts laying around bits and pieces why not have a go and see what you can make and for the sake of clarity let's show you the insides so the tool goes in the uh, oh, if I can keep my hands out of the way that would be awesome let's see how I go so you take the tension apart and it engages with this locking bolt here and with tension on the locking bolt it's just not going to work so well because I don't have a keyway to hold the tool in place then you can take the central part oops again it's not going to work so well uh, let me just cheat but you take that other part and then you push this lever up so that the gate is there and then the bolt can be moved across and you're basically done. Um, also just a minor thing that I did with this tool was in the tip here I filed in a little arrow. Uh, the arrow here is pointing up that way and the point of that was to let me know which way this end is pointing because with this rounded end once it's inside the lock, you can't see it, so when you want to know where it is, it's just a matter of looking at this little arrow on the end and you know exactly where the tool is. So, that's my ghetto 2-in-1 lever lock pick for a lane. This lane, in fact. So, that's probably enough of that. If at some point I decide to make another one of these, I'll take some photographs and do a little bit of filming of the process as I go through it. Um, I built this thing on a whim, just, you know, for the hell of it while I was just sitting around w watching some lectures. And, yeah, I was just too busy with other things to bother to try and dick around with cameras and the like. So... 
Anyway, that's probably fairly crappy in terms of showing you anything, but I hope there is something in there for you. At the very least, um, you know, I hope it's encouragement to, um, to allow you to have a go at making some of your own tools. Doesn't cost a lot. It'll take you a little bit of time, but it's an enjoyable process, and to have a tool at the end of the day that you built yourself, I think, is pretty damn cool. So, enough waffle from me. Peace and respect. Be good. See you another day.